This video is a remake of a video that I posted years ago. I've added a few extra details in, but pay attention to the small things in the video, and that's what's important. There are 16 tips in this, so look at the little things even in between the tips. It's important when you take the stack screws off to make sure that the screws aren't stripped. So what I'm going to do is first tighten it, see if it'll be tightened, and it can't be tightened. That way I know if they're stripped and I can mark it and fix them as I take the stack off. Uh, usually if you find a strip one, it's going to be when you're putting all 10 screws back in and it's the very last one to put in, you'll see it's stripped and, stripped and have to take them all back off. So always tighten first and then loosen it up. Once you get the screws loosened up all the way around, quickly just go around with your screwdriver, take them all out, or at least loosen them all up. Then what I like to do is go back and pull them out with a, a magnet or you can use a screw grabber. That way you don't drop them like I do all over the place. This is something from Mark Pernum uh, Supply 88. It's a little holder form. It says number one and 88 over here. It makes it very easy for me to pull these out with a magnet and just put them in there. You can see I shake. That's why I use this and not just my fingers because I'm always dropping them. Now remove the stack and set it aside. There's plenty of room usually to put the keys there as well. So I'm just going to take all the keys off. Take them off a handful at a, at a time. Get your exercise in for the day. Get a little vertigo while you're doing this, turning around. One thing I should point out is when you take these off, put your hand under and support them like this and raise them. If they're a little sticky or hard to get off, don't, don't yank them off like this, but gently push them off. And you might have to do just a few because you don't want to elongate the balance rail hole. You want to protect that. Just pull them all off. Luckily, these don't need to be eased. They're a little tight and feel like pulling them off. But as you lift the key, it drops back down, it actually slides down. So it's a very nice fit of that balance rail hole. And we don't want to mess that up. As I vacuum, I like to go one direction because as, as I go one direction, it kind of spins those punchings around. And then I'll come back the other way, and you'll also see me using a brush. This is a huge brush. I kind of like it for the back there, but some kind of a brush to get me going. After cleaning the action, everything's pretty clean, but I want to put a lubricant, and the Lube 444 is a good choice. I'm steering away from this now because this actually dries its uh, mold release formula and actually dries kind of hard. And I found that if you put several applications of this, several layers of it on, after a while it can kind of squeak. And so I don't like it as a lubricant. Um, I do like the Protec products. This is Protec Pro Lube. I'm not putting the CLP on, which is also a good one that could uh, go on, but the CLP is Cleaner Lubricant Protectant. The cleaner is a solvent. I don't really need the solvent, so I'll just put this on. And I like to apply it. You can do it with a rag, but I like to do it with just an, an acid brush. It just goes on this quick. And you can see I'm putting it on liberally. And just remember that when you put it on the balance rail pins, especially, you want to make sure to get the top and bottom of the balance rail pins. Every now and then just lube up your brush again. You're going to find that you'll eliminate side friction this way too. Get the bottoms really well. I don't really like to spray stuff on, although if I were doing it maybe the TL50, uh, the Teflon spray is a good choice. And then get the tops. You don't need to get the middle of the pin. The middle of the pin doesn't touch anything. So get the top of the pin where it pivots in the key bushing. And I'm noticing these as I go along. I can see them uh, kind of shine up as I put this stuff on them. As you put the, the keys back on, you can put them on one at a time. That's a little slow. 
But learn to just grab handfuls of them. Kind of let them drop on. Don't force them on. Handful at a time. And uh, hopefully you're a little faster than me today. But just let them drop on. Now I can feel as I'm putting these on, I, it, it felt kind of hard to get them off. And now they're going on very easily. You don't necessarily need to ream or not ream, some people ream the balance rail hole, but size the balance rail hole. Uh, sometimes all it is is lubrication that you need. While I have the action up cleaning it, I'm going to take a brush. This is a fairly stiff brush, but it's not wire. It's a synthetic brush. And I'm going to brush this way. Now you can brush up and down this way. You can brush in circles. Whatever it is to open up the nap of the leather, you want to open that up and clean it. Well, I cleaned it a minute ago, but now I'm opening it up so that it will accept this Teflon powder. Now it's pretty well opened up. I have a little applicator here. It's just a piece of felt on a stick that I like to use to apply this instead of my finger. It gets a little messy, but I'm going to blow out that other stuff as I go. A few other things I should mention. The reason we keep these in order is because a lot of times if one's stripped out, you put an oversized screw in it. All these screws are the same size, so it doesn't matter a whole lot, although I kind of like doing that, just keeping them in order. Now another thing, there's an order to put the screws in and it's three steps basically or three uh, ways to order these. And I like to put them this way for a specific reason so you remember number one, angle screws go in last. Now in this Mason Hamlin, all the front ones are angled so I'm not going to put those in. Generally number uh, two would be you put the corner screws in first which I'm going to do. I'm going to put the two on the rear here, since they're not angled, I'm going to put those in first, and screw those in first. Now, since these are angled then, I'm going to go ahead and put the ones in the back that are straight, I'm going to put those in. And then after those are tight, I'm going to come around here and put these in. As you tighten these screws up, always go backwards first to make sure that you're in and not cross-threaded. So let it drop down inside. Now this one, and then don't over tighten them. Of course, at the first you check to see if there were any strip ones, so we know there's not. But on this one here, let me see if I can demonstrate it better. Sometimes it's a real subtle thing. You just go back a little bit. I'm going to go back until I hear it drop. Right there. Okay, then I go forward. Sometimes you don't need to do that. Sometimes it's very easy. They feel uh, really easy to put in. That means you haven't cross-threaded anything. But it's kind of important to do that. Cross-threading is one of the worst things you can do to a screw hole. So when I drop it in, I felt it. I went backwards. I felt it drop. Down I go. Firm it up. Don't over-strip it, over-tighten it, and strip it. That one I felt drop in immediately. Didn't have to go back hardly at all. Now we'll do the front screws, which are angled. Sometimes if they're a little hard to get in like that, I'll just go ahead and use my magnet. And that's the case here, so I'm just going to use this magnet that I have. And it's much easier for me to put them in this way because of my shaky hands. So just drop it in with your magnet. Okay. I really like this thing. It's real small, doesn't weigh anything. You can carry it with you. And then just tighten them all up. Once again, go backwards first. There, I felt it drop. And then go forward. If you do the, the angled ones first, what happens is it slides the action forward a little bit, or the stack, I should say, forward a little bit, and your whole hammer line and everything is going to be messed up. So that's why you do not want to do that. Here's a summary of all 16 tips that I made in the video. Pause the video if you need to take notes or take picture.